Welcome to the Self-Educated Entrepreneur Podcast, where I help you turn from overwhelmed side hustler into a profitable business owner. I am your host, Faye Mitchell, who is a profitable four-time serial entrepreneur and productivity coach. This show is for those who are motivated, want to add value to their life, and are on a mission to never stop learning. Tune in weekly as we have leading entrepreneurs in their space and special guests share their knowledge from time to time to turn your side hustle into a legit business. Now sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. Hello, everybody. It's Fave here with another episode of the Self-Educated Entrepreneur Podcast. Today, we have another entrepreneur on the show who asks this question, are you ready to grow your business? If so, he helps committed industry leaders and premium service providers earn six-figure monthly revenue. If that sounds like you, then we have David on the show who's ready to talk to you about increasing profits and expanding into new markets. He offers free consultations to see if you're a good fit, and he also has a paid discovery call to go over anything you want within your business to help you solve your problems. What's going on, David? Thanks for coming on the show, man. Thank you for having me on, Fabian. I appreciate it. And thank you for anybody listening or watching out there because you're taking a bold step forward toward trying to learn more and just trying to learn, you know, how to do more with your life. And once you begin on that mission, you're doing something that most people just won't do. Agreed, man. So with that doing more and starting more, so this show is centered around side hustlers who want to take their business full time, leave that corporate plantation. So we all start somewhere. So how did David start as an entrepreneur? Well, I started, I don't want to say working on the plantation. It's just, it's just not, I don't want to say that, but it did feel like that. And this is coming from a white guy. So I really should not even talk about this. So, but anyway, I started working for Uh, marketing agencies. I went to college studying to be a writer. So I studied Chaucer Mm. and Shakespeare and Keats. And, and, you know, I I would go to writers conferences uh, and I was constantly reading. So uh, during college, of course, you have what are called internships where you go and you work for other companies that are related to what you want to do. And in return, you get college credit or uh, they pay for your books, right? So I went to several different newspapers and ad agencies and worked as many internships as I could get back then because it would pay for my books or pay for the courses, which are, can be a lot. Mm-hmm. And I realized at that point that the jobs for being a writer or an editor did not pay very well and were going to be difficult to get into unless you were dating somebody who worked there, unless you had a family member working there or had a master's degree, it was going to be difficult to get in there. And it may not even be worth it because the pay was low. So as soon as I graduated from college, I went right to a marketing agency. And then I was also a double threat because this was in the mid nineties. So the internet, as we now know, it was still relatively new back then. You had search engines, but they were Yahoo and Excite and Alta Vista. So I knew how to create websites. I knew how to write the content or copy for these websites. I knew how to trick out the SEO because back then it really wasn't that difficult. Mm -hmm. You know, Um, so that's how I got started working for agencies. And then during that 20 plus year journey in between those positions, I would work as a freelancer or solopreneur, contractor, consultant, whatever you want to call it. Interesting. That's how I got started. So would you say you've always kind of had a feeling, even when you, after college and and getting into the agency and stuff, you've kind of always had a feeling of entrepreneurship? Yes, because, and there's a lot that I left out uh, because it was just so much time. Mm -hmm. But I was was also a certified small business mentor. (laughs) 
for the U.S. Small Business Administration. Mm. I also was a business mentor for other nonprofit organizations. I'm still a business mentor for uh, one or two other nonprofits as well. Um, so how many, you know, nonprofits and businesses have I mentored? Probably several hundred because a lot of these places don't keep track. So as far as entrepreneurship in me, during all that time, I had my own consultancy, uh, which was an LLC. So we paid our taxes and you're audited and, you know, you uh, hire help when you need it for larger projects. And I also had a nonprofit organization uh, as well during that time, providing sliding scale mediation services. And a lot of people don't know what mediation is. So that's where not in every city because it's not very popular in the U S In the U S they like to duke it out. They want to fight, mm -hmm. but mediation is basically rather than going to court and fight, you would go and work with a mediator who would work in coordination with the lawyers and they work out an agreement. So I had a mediation nonprofit organization briefly and we were audited every year. So I, it's something that I learned a lot about from my own experiences, but also from working with clients who, you know, either went to these large multi-million dollar marketing agencies or that I would work with them as an independent consultant. And they're coming to me as very new businesses and they don't know anything about marketing, no idea where to begin. They may think they do or they read an article or two, but they don't know what to do. And you have to be the expert to guide them. Yeah. You know, I, I want to say I can already tell we've just met shortly, briefly here, but man, I could tell you're a very deep, thoughtful person who cares about others. Just from hearing your quick journey here of you laying it out, even yeah. when you went into servitude, you, you seem to always have been in servitude of others to help others reach, you know, their journey. But it's important to recognize that that's that mind of wanting to help and caring about others is not by any means at the cost of sacrificing myself or the, the uh, future of my own family. Mm -hmm. So, as we were talking about before we began recording, you know, I may offer a free 30 minute consultation, but a lot of other people offer the same thing, but they do it for 15 minutes, mm -hmm. right? I do it for 30 minutes because I talk slowly and I like pauses and I'm not going to be rushed. So, you know, I like to take my time, but it's primarily to see if we're a good fit for each other. I'm not gonna help a business owner fix a broken website or audit their website or instruct them in how to use SEO for free. Why is that? Am I being a jerk? No, it's valuing my time, valuing my experience that it took me decades to learn. And also if you give too much, people would have a tendency to not value that. You know, if I tell, if I give you this pen and I tell you, I'm going to give you this pen for free, would your thought well, could be, who cares? It's, it's <laughs> it, you know, it's probably going to come apart as soon as I try to write it. It's not going to work very well. I could get a pen for free, you know, whatever. It has no value to you. But if I tell you that this pen, you know, has 20 years experience, you know, writing and signing contracts, that a beautiful, noble spirit lives within it, that is the best pen you'll ever need. It's the only one you're going to need for the rest of your life, you know, and I'm going to offer it at this low, low price, but for a limited time only, then you're going to think, wow, maybe I should go ahead and do that. <laughs> you know? And it's unfortunate that you have to be like that with a lot mm -hmm. of people, but, but you do until you get to know them at least. And you can't know someone and you certainly can't know about a business unless you've had at least two or three discussions, at least. So when I talk to a new client, we've got to have at least that initial 30 minute call to see if we're a good fit. 
For all I know, the person could, you know, have multiple personalities or something where their budget could be $50 or some crazy thing like that, where they have a business, but they don't really care if it makes any money or not. A lot of people are like that, yeah. or it's just, it's a hobby and they want to see what they can get for free. That's not what I'm interested in. Mm -hmm. It's not mm -hmm. about making the money. It's about accelerating and growing uh, the business of someone who cares. Could I help a business make six figures? Sure. But I can't take someone who's not committed. Mm. And there's a profound difference there. If it's a hobby that you do for fun, hey, that's fine. That's perfectly great. I play video games for fun. There's nothing wrong with that. But I don't expect it to support my family. That's the difference. So that's why I don't take myself seriously, but I take the work and the business very seriously. And I don't play around. Once somebody gives me money, they expect something back. Mm -hmm. I expect to be able to knock it out of the park and be able to do what I do. So whatever your side hustle is or whatever you do or, th or you're thinking of doing, you need to take that seriously as well. Mm -hmm. That's kind of how I feel. I don't disrespect others. At least I try not to. And if I do, then I apologize immediately. But you're disrespecting the craft, you're disrespecting what people are doing and their families are trying to take care of their families. Times are tougher now than ever before. It's just, you get out what you put in. Yeah. So I know I digressed there. No, so you're good, man. This is free form. Speak it. If you're feeling it, speak it. Um, something you alluded to about and we talked about this on the show. I wanted to just give this quick story about knowing your worth and things like that, because another thing that I know in my experience, I got a one to one client when we started working together. You know, she didn't understand her worth and her value, and she works extremely hard. She had a gentleman. She owns a dog walking service. And we were going over her current clients and stuff like that. She had a gentleman who owed her nine hundred dollars. We we started working together in October of 2020. She she had this client since like June or July, and he hadn't paid her since. And she was still working for him. And I said, Hey, what are you what are you doing? I said, How much does he owe you? She she never calculated and looked, and we finally calculated nine hundred dollars. I said, and you're still going to walk his dog and serve him. I said, not for only free. are you for free, not only are you not getting paid by him, but now you're telling me I can't even pick up other customers because he's in my in that time slot. That's exactly it. So you're hurting yourself on multiple levels because you're taking you're basically saying, I have no value. Imagine that. Imagine looking at yourself in the mirror and saying, I have no value. She's literally working for free and she can't make any money. So she lost that $900. She may be able to get it back. She may not. But she's also in a position where she's losing money now because this person who won't pay her or has not paid her, now she can't work with clients in, or customers during that time that she's mm -hmm. continuing to work with this person. So in many ways, it's an abusive relationship. Mm. The person isn't beating you, but they're robbing your money. And for all you know, that person could be going home laughing and saying, man, I just got this, this woman to walk my dog for free. I don't have to do it. I have this woman on a string. But why does she do it? Maybe she what was her deal? Did she have low self-esteem, no sense of, of value? Or did, maybe anybody can do it so it has no value? It was a lot of confidence. We had to work through and give a lot of confidence because there wasn't a lot of confidence to even charge more prices and stuff like that. And so definitely she had to value herself and her services more, showing <laughs> you know, the effort and all of this stuff. I mean, she's such a hard worker, man. You know, the thing is you have the, va just being a dog walker alone. Okay. That's it from a marketing standpoint. If you have references and testimonials, if you have any kind of professional membership or affiliation, 
And there are groups for pet sitters and dog walkers. You can join, you can get references and testimonials. You can have people who will vouch for you. You can have a professionally designed website that looks beautiful, that's responsive and works on your phone. You can have local SEO. So people are finding you in Google on and on. You can take payments online. If you do these things alone, it will set you apart from mm. all the super cheap, low rent, low budget uh, competitors who don't have these things, don't know to do them, or are too lazy to care. So just by virtue of having all of that, you could charge more and say, look, I'm the only dog sitter in the area who has references, who's reliable, who's registered registered as an LLC. You know, I'm a member of the Better Business Bureau locally. You don't have to pay money to join the BBB, I don't think. Not, you know, you can just be listed. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and just by virtue of these doing things, these things by taking your business seriously. Yes. It's only until you do that, that it can grow. You know, I can tell you a story about that if you want. Yeah. Okay. So when I was first starting out, when I was a college student, okay, college students are notorious for not having a lot of money. And spam is actually expensive if you're a college student. Ramen is cheap. Spam <laughs> is not. And uh, so, you know, I was a, a college student. I had designed websites for small business owners back in the 90s and everything. And I wanted to have a portfolio website, but I had no money. I mean, zilch. And I was going to an interview at a marketing agency. Okay. So I had a quote unquote free do it yourself template that I put my portfolio on. And I was going to differentiate myself by showing all this other work that I had done and writing very carefully crafted, very literate, intelligent blog posts that were like articles. And so anyway, I go to this interview very excited, got on my, you know, my suit and tie. I take my laptop with me. I set it down on the person's desk. I would turn it on, wait a few minutes for the Wi-Fi to kick in and everything. I'm waiting for the website to appear. And you know what happened, right? Crash. No, it wasn't there. It was gone. It was completely gone. So I apologized to the person because I knew I wasn't going to get the job at that point. Mm -hmm. And so I went home. Long story short, I ended up emailing because you could not call. So I ended up emailing the free do it yourself template company. and saying, well, what happened? I wasn't doing anything illegal. Wasn't doing anything unethical. I'm just a guy showing my portfolio, you know, writing blog posts. Mm -hmm. You deleted my site without notifying me. What, you know, WTF, what happened? And they said, well, look, legally, according to our terms, we can delete a website at any moment for any reason. We don't have to give you a reason. So if a competitor complains about your website, if uh, an image is from an old PowerPoint template or, you know, anybody for any reason complains about, you know, an image of an office or whatever, that it, it looks like one of theirs or whatever, they'll just delete your site, period. Wow. And it can also put ads all over it too. So it looks really doggone unprofessional like that. But anyway, they had deleted the site. So it took two months for me from that day to get the response from them. And I never, you know, so what I did that night, that night when the site was deleted, I remember going home and feeling terrible. And I talked to my wife and at the time we were just dating. And I said, I told her what happened. And I just said, look, I know money is tight. I'm just a college student, don't have a lot of money. I'm just gonna call up a hosting provider and I'm gonna pay for my own hosting and I'm gonna create my own professional business website like I should have done back then. I'm going to make it beautiful. It's going to look the same on every mobile device there is. And this was back then mm -hmm. in the 90s, okay? So I'm going to create my own business site, my own portfolio. I'm going to, I'm going to write my own content, you know, the way I want to write it. Yeah. 
And then if someone has an issue with me, they have to send me a letter, you know, through their lawyer, and then I'll respond accordingly that way. And nothing ever did happen. But I just spent, I spent a couple of hundred dollars on a deluxe hosting account. I created my own site and I registered with the, uh, you know, with the local government as an LLC. So I had that legal perfection pr- protection. It was a legal business. I registered with the local Better Business Bureau and that was it. And guess what? After that, it did become much more easy to attract new clients because yes, there were competitors who were super cheap, bargain basement, but they weren't professional. They weren't experienced. They weren't committed like I was because they didn't have the LLC. They weren't registered with the Better Business Bureau. They didn't talk to the clients like I did. So did I get all the customers who came to me? No. But I presented myself in that way and said, look, yeah, there's a lot of people who are super cheap and they'll, they'll build your website for $5 or you can go do it yourself for free, but you won't rank on the first page of Google, will you? And back then it was Yahoo. But I still approach it today. I say, sure, there's all kinds of free do-it-yourself or templates, but they won't make you number one in Google. They won't help you grow your business. And if that really matters to you, then you understand that you have to pay to get quality results. You can do your own dental work too. You could go to Amazon and you could buy a kit to do your own dental work, but you're gonna look like Flavor Flav. <laughs> you know, you're gonna you're gonna look like a fool. Oh man, I love it. So that actually, you know, that's investing in yourself and stuff like that. And that right. actually, that makes me think of kind of me. I also own a lawn business. And that's that conversation that I have with my clients where, you know, we're licensed, all that, all that stuff, right? We're legal, pay our taxes. Well, you have all these guys out here with trucks and trailers that are cutting grass for like $15. So I immediately set that up front, like, hey, this is our company. This is what we're about. You're going to get somebody that shows up. We're not going to do crappy work, all that stuff, right? Because, okay, you can go with the guy that's $15. But guess what? He's going to end up not showing up or he's going to be leaving clippings everywhere. And it's going to, you know, so I have that conversation up front with people. And I have found, even though some people may not like you, I don't get them all. I've gotten emails back from people, even if they didn't go with me, that they at least they liked my approach and they appreciated the professionalism that, you know, I presented towards even the potential of doing business with them. Yeah, I'll tell you another quick story. This is 100% true. And it's, I have to say that because some people won't believe it. So maybe five, six years ago, when I was very, very active, I was teaching boot camps on weekends, evenings, going to chamber meetings, uh, very, very active. Mm-hmm. Okay. And so anyway, I was teaching boot camps, workshops, everything that I could possibly do. So this gentleman approaches me at one of these workshops that I'm I'm teaching or a networking event. And he says, can you help me with my business website? What do you know about that? And I said, sure, tell me what's going on. He said, well, I have a dating agency locally and we're doing pretty well financially. So we're making pretty good money. But here's the thing, I have a website and it's got different issues with it. It doesn't work correctly. Uh, it's, it's got weird glitches going on. I don't know what to do. I said, okay, that's interesting. Tell me a little bit more. How did you make it? Did you do it yourself? Because that's, that's probably what's happened. He said, well, I love going to bars, hanging out in bars all the time and flirting with, you know, with women and everything. This is what he told me. And he said, so I get people to help me with the website by buying them beer. And I said, no, 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 you're kidding. He said, no, I buy people beer. And then in in exchange for the beer, they go and they log into my website and they agree to make changes to it or help me with it. So he said, I have like five people I met at different bars who I bought, uh, you know, beer for, and they all have my username and password. They can log into my website, do whatever they want to do with it. And they're supposed to be helping me, you know, and when they, when I need more changes done, they'll meet me at the bar 
and I'll buy them more drinks and sometimes I'll buy them food. So that was his business model. And it was blowing up in his face because strange things were happening to his site. It wasn't working the way that he had wanted it to and so on. So he asked me if I could help him. I said, oh, I have no doubt I can help you. But I said, there's a problem. He said, well, what's that? And I said, I don't drink. And, and it's 100% true. And he was angry when I said that. And he and, and I said, you, and, I, and I followed it up and I said, you got to pay someone, at least realistically, to help you solve your problem if you want real tangible results. He said, I'll never do that. Not as long as I could go to a bar and buy people a few drinks. So I said, okay, good for you. Have a nice day. See you at the bar. I'm out. I've got things to do, right? I didn't, I always have things to do. So anyway, about two weeks later, I looked up the website just out of curiosity because I always keep a list of, you know, people's websites who are dubious or whatever, just out of curiosity. And there was like a error page. You know, this site is down 404 or 301. Mm -hmm. I forget what it is. And so I was like, okay, that makes sense. Then I checked it again a few days later. It's completely gone. Never to return. And I've, I've had so many instances like that. And after a couple of years, you learn to tell the people, here's, here's what I charge, you know, $50 an hour at that time. My rate's a little bit higher now. You know, you can pay me for, you know, an, uh, an hour, you know, where I'll go over the site with you. You can pay me for two hours to, you know, log into your site, look at it, whatever. But I'm not going to take the 20 plus years of experience that I have and just throw it away because you see no value in it. Continue along your, per your current course and your business can go under. But at some point, if you want to save things and turn things around, you can't, you can't get something for nothing. Exactly. So the the next thing that I would like to discuss with you is, so as far as marketing goes, at what stage of business growth should a business owner focus on marketing? Like when they're trying to start their business or after they've got things going, where where should they focus that? In my opinion, as someone who's been in marketing for over 20 years, too many business owners jump in with no specific plans as to how they're going to get results. And they're trying to do everything themselves by themselves for free. And then they wonder five years or 10 years later, why is, why is it no one's calling me? There's a lot that goes into this. So it's a process. It's not an item. It's not Burger King. So, you don't, you can't have it your way and you can't have it immediately. It's a process, not an item. So in order to gain traction in Google and get more customers and, and more emails coming in, more people, you just, you got to have a plan in place that's organized and thought out before you begin. You have to know who your target market's going to be, how you're going to reach them, what your SEO should be. Your SEO is how you outrank competitors online. You have to know what your social media uh, distribution channels are going to be because there's a lot of different social media channels out there. You have to pick the top three or four that are right for you. Okay, there, it's not always the same for everybody. If you're a painter or an artist or a tattooist, okay, Facebook might be good but Pinterest is going to catch a lot of interest too, because mm -hmm. that's all about imagery. So what, what I would say is that you really shouldn't even think about marketing until you have at least a couple thousand dollars to work with a professional who can help you mm -hmm. get running on that treadmill. Because if you just, if your attitude is, I'm just going to throw a handful of rice at the wall and see what's going to stick, that's no way to plan. You know, that's just not going to work. And that's why most people aren't getting where they want to be online. Anybody can go get a cheap do-it-yourself or template and throw it up on the internet. The problem is not everybody can get any results from that. Yeah. And those, those who do get the results get the results because they have a very thought out 
very organized, deliberate plan in order to target who they want to work with. And then a way to do that. We're using paid advertising, you're using SEO, you're using content marketing, your website is designed in a way that is responsive, it works on all devices, and so on. You can take payments online, it looks very serious and professional. You've studied your larger competitors and you've learned from them. You've analyzed your, your local market. You know what your customers want, what they don't want. So you've got to know all of those things before you get started. It would be like me saying, I want to go beat up Mike Tyson. It's a joke, you know, even at his age, he would, you know, my teeth would be in the other room, <laughs> right? So, I mean, yeah, it's just, it's crazy. You have to do the work in order to get the results. It's very simple. I understand a lot of business owners will complain that they don't have any money or they're really broke and, and so on. But again, if you need to get something done, you can put it on your credit card and you can pay in installments. There, there's nobody out there who won't work with you. If you have a credit card, you want to put it you know, on the card or you want to pay in installments and, mm -hmm. you know, or get a subscription plan set up. There's always a way to do it. I've worked with clients who said, I don't have a lot of money. I can only pay 200 a month or something. Well, that's fine. We can get on a subscription plan and we'll just do things very slowly. That's all, you know, or, or um, it might cost $3,000 for what I estimate needs to be done. That's fine. I'm not going to ask for all that for uh, right up front. We'll ask for 50% then we can do it in increments from there. There's always a way to work with someone if their will is there. Mm. But if it's just a hobby, then there's nothing to work with. <coughs> Excuse me. So, you know, you, you have to look at it from that perspective. You want to make sure who you're working with is a good fit for you, that they have something you can work with, you know? Yeah. Um, I always tell freelancers and people with side hustles, you know, who are experiencing problems, I always say, well, first you have to screen who it is you're talking to. You know, are they a good fit for you? Are what they doing, what they're doing, is that in line with who you are as a as a person? Cause I'll never forget I had a potential client call me up. And he seemed very intelligent, very articulate. His budget was very good, very good. He knew exactly, he knew all about text message advertising, which mm -hmm. most people don't, most people don't even know it exists. They get it on their phone, but they don't know what it is. So text message advertising, he knew exactly what that was, how to do it. He knew about SEO. He knew what e-commerce was. He wanted to take payments for services and uh, products. So he was an ideal client. And then I asked him, well, sir, I, I have to know what is it that you do? What is this business? And he said, oh, I'm opening up a new escort service in your city. And I just said, you know what, let me ask you to, to, can you hold on for one minute, sir? So I go to my wife and I said, can, can I take this client? He seems like he's very rational, very intelligent, articulate, and his budget's very good. I mean, I could do more than just buy you a nice new dress. You know, we'd be fine for at least six months. And this was quite some time ago. Mm -hmm. And she just, she gave me a dirty look and said, come on, you know. Cause if you go there, you'll go any, you'll go anywhere. So uh, I just went back and I said, I'm sorry, sir. I can't in good conscience work for, you know, an escort service. I, I wish you a lot of luck. I, get, I don't know if I could even say that, but you know, I'm, I'm sorry, but I, I just can't do that. That's a, you know, I, I can't cross that road with you. Yeah. You know, so you've got to know what you will or won't do. You have to screen potential clients before you work with them. Then you have to have an onboarding process where you train the client in how you make decisions about design, about SEO, about the content, um, you know, everything on down. And if you're not in that position and you don't know how to answer these questions, then you suffer through what they call red flag clients, people who are super cheap or broke 
or have hobbies, but not real businesses. And for the legitimate business owners who may be listening, I know you're out there, but if you have a side hustle or you're a freelancer or you're someone who's new to digital marketing or SEO or web design or what have you, these people will find you and seek you out because they think mm-hmm. they can get, they think that they'll get a bargain from you. Mm-hmm. And the reality, the reality is that it's really an abusive relationship that is perpetuated on both sides because the business owner ends up getting something that's really not going to be very useful to them that they're going to have to replace uh, shortly thereafter, or they're going to end up going out of business. And <laughs> that's right. And the, the, the freelancer who's doing that work is, is really suffering because they're not doing the best work that they could be doing. They're not really going to have work that they can feature in a portfolio. They're not going to get references or testimonials. They're disrespecting themselves, their own experience and their future, what they want to do. And really they're disrespecting their families because you're not doing their best. Yeah. If you're not doing your best, then what's the point? What is, yeah. I love it because I'm sure like you in my experience now, because I, I got them, the clients that wanted cheap work and all of that stuff when I started and I had all yeah. those learning lessons. Cut it. Now yeah. I can spot them. Like I, I have my pre-qualified questions of stuff I ask and I can spot them right away. Like, oh, yep, yeah, not a good fit. <laughs> Right. Yeah. There's several questions that you can ask. Um, So I I prefer to work with enterprise business owners. What does that mean? That means a business that's been around for usually around five years. They usually have three to five employees. They may or may not have a physical location. They might have a warehouse or something like that. Mm -hmm. Um, but they have mo- they may have more than one location. They have several employees. They've been around for three to five years. They're making profits. So if you ask a business like that to invest a few thousand dollars in order to make back, let's say you're asking them to invest three thousand so they can make back thirty thousand in a few months. For most real businesses, they're ready to do that all day long. I can make back 30,000 in a couple of months. Why wouldn't you do that? And there's multiple ways to do that. It's not just the website attracting more more leads through Google. It's also now we're writing content. We're circulating it online. You're teaching them about paid advertising, Facebook, LinkedIn, and so on. You're also teaching them how to network effectively. You're teaching them how to use online tools such as Meetup and Facebook Live and LinkedIn Live and, you know, how to uh, collaborate with other similar businesses. So you're giving them so much value. You're teaching them how to use the company website to consolidate, you know, multiple operations and how to reduce overhead. So you're doing so much on so many different levels. There's no way that they can't do better if they'll get out of their own way. Mm. That's that's a key part. So since you speak about social media, like on your site, you speak about social media, sharing sure. or caring. Right. So can you give us some insight into your thoughts on social media in the business space? I have mixed feelings about social media. Um, I, I, you know, unlike a lot of people, I don't depict myself as a magical guru guy. And I don't want people to think that you can go out there and make a million dollars overnight with no money down and all of this other, you know, smoke and mirrors. Uh, So I, I, you know, here's the thing, social media, you can go on Facebook and LinkedIn and Twitter, and you can chit chat and you can interact and talk about politics or what have you. But does it forward your business? Does it make you any money? Does it support your family? And to me, that's the biggest thing. Because when I was struggling, there were times when I didn't know if we were going to be able to pay the rent that month, that month. And I was hustling and doing everything I could. And I sometimes there were times that I just didn't know. But I did know that it was non negotiable. So if you'd ask me, are you going to make it this month? I would tell you, I'm not sure, but I would say, 
but failure is not an option. So the reality is I'm going to find a way. If it means selling blood, I'm going to do that. If it means teaching boot camps and workshops in, you know, all night long or, you know, you know, three or four every day, if that's what it takes, then I'm going to do it. Um, but as far as social media marketing goes, people think that social media marketing is the internet and it's not. Having a Facebook page is not the same thing as having an actual website. It's not going to register in Google search results. It doesn't look professional. It shows me that you're too cheap or you're too poor or too broke to invest in the actual real business website. So, and I, and I get that people don't always have money. That's fine. You wait until you're ready. Mm. So you don't go out there and present yourself in an unprofessional, incomplete way. So to me, social media marketing needs to be used very carefully. I'm very careful uh, on social media marketing with what I say, what I communicate to, or who I communicate to, because you you think you're communicating with someone and this person could say that they're a business owner or an entrepreneur and it could be a 13 year old kid in mommy's basement you don't know they could be catfishing you you have no clue and that's why they show a cartoon picture and not a real photo of a real person so you got to be very careful i always recommend you know having anonymous accounts so that you can uh, interact and have, you know, questions or comments or ask technical issues or whatever. And then one for your business where you just promote the business. That's it. So your job as a business owner is to use social media to distribute quality content so that the people out there, the other business owners or consumers who need what you have can find it on Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, and so on. But, you know, if you're arguing with people over who won the election or whether or not COVID is real, that's fine if you really want to, you know, spend your time doing that. But it shouldn't be associated with a business, in my opinion, because it's just one doesn't have anything to do with the other. And you're taking time away from the business. You know, if you own a restaurant, you want to be taking care of the food, the health standards, the bookkeeping, the hiring, the firing, you know, you want to be managing all of that, not spending your time trying to learn, you know, about Miffy, uh, whether Miffy or Skippy approves of what Kim Kardashian is doing or something. So social media marketing should be used to distribute quality content to your ideal customer or consumer. If it's a restaurant, recipes, cooking demonstrations, uh, your own custom sauce, if it's a hair salon, you know, your own custom shampoo, or how your salon is different from others, or how you just added e-commerce, and now people can go to that and pay online in advance, they can book an appointment and pay online. Mm. If you know, whatever it is you can think of, there's a way to use the internet to build that business hand over fist. There's always a way, but you've got you got to permit it. Yeah, you're right. And speaking of further with social media, and you mentioned a little bit about the gurus out there. Sure. I know you've seen it. I know I've seen it, and I'm sure you see it all the time being in, in the marketing space. But there's been this evolution and pop up of all these digital marketing companies that right. guarantee you riches in, in three days. So yeah. for the for the entrepreneur out there who is looking to invest in somebody to help them with marketing, how can they screen for a good marketing company and not get caught up in in this marketing hype of, of guarantees and promises? It's actually very easy. Um, if you go to a doctor, what's the first thing you see when you walk in that office? Oh, you see the plaques and the degrees and the, yeah. Thank you. And you see someone waiting to say, you know, how can I help you? What's your insurance? So the, when you are looking for someone to work with, 
you want to look for testimonials from not TJ in New York says Bob did a great job. I mean, that has no meaning. That could be, you, they could have made that up. You're not going to know. So I have testimonials on my own site from real people I've worked with. And you can tell they're real people because it shows their first and last name. They have real photos of real people. They're not, you know, male models. They don't look perfect or anything. They're real people who, you know, they have gray hair, they have pimples, they don't look perfect. They're, they look like real people that you would see out on the street, oh. you know. So you want to look for testimonials from verifiable sources with real businesses. You want to look, uh, look for references. You want to look for educational credentials. Do they have any affiliations with professional organizations related to what they say they're an expert in? Do they have case studies that you can look at? So that it shows you some evidence that they really care about what they do. They're very serious about it. You know, they want you, the viewer, to be informed. You know, so my website is far from perfect. There's always more that could be done. But I have case studies that you don't have to subscribe, you don't have to pay, you don't have to do anything, you know, to read the case studies. Mm. You know, if you want to talk to me, you don't have to pay anything to talk to me, you can get a free 30 minute consultation. And it's primarily to see if we're a good fit. And it's 30 minutes because I like to talk slowly and take my time, you know, but they should do the same thing. They should have a website that looks modern and professional and works on your phone. It shouldn't have ads all over it. You know, that looks, it looks, I mean, come on, if you're a real yeah. business, why would you have website? You know, why would you have ads all over your website? Why would you need it? You know, if you're professional, you should have testimonials and references. It shouldn't be a big deal. So that's what you want to look for. You want to look for the same thing that you would, you know, in a mechanic or a doctor or a lawyer or whatever. Do you have references, testimonials I can check? Do you have case studies? Can I ask you whatever I want to ask you before we begin? Do you have a process? Do you use contracts? Are you a member of any professional organizations? Are you, are you educated? Do you have a degree that's related to what you do? Mm. You know, that helps. So you don't need to have all of those things, but it does help if, if, if you're doing that and you have some of those, and if you're looking for that professional help, you want to look for those elements, at least some of those. So that, that's my input. They should be able to talk about whatever problems or questions you have and be able to answer them. There's no question someone could ask me that I won't know the answer to. You know, I mean, yeah, they, they should be able to do that. Yeah, no, I, I love it because that's one thing that I found, like even in the coaching that I really, really hated is, you know, they promote this. Well, I can make you, um, I can make you 5k in a month right. and do this and do that, which is possible. I'm not saying that they're not right. But they're not, they're selling you that dream and that livelihood, but they're not right. really telling you like the hard work that you're going to put in. Like that's you speak key about the hard work. Like, hey, I can get you there, but I'm going to need you to be committed to, you know, to this process. Right. If you're not willing to take the time to answer my questions and have meetings with me and give me information that I need, you know, and, and, and so on and pay me on time and do what you're supposed <laughs> to do, I, I, I can't help you. Mm -hmm. And I'm not going to try. And it's in my contract. And even on my own website, where I say I can help committed business owners and premium service providers make a six figure monthly revenue. Now, I mean it. Can I do it? Hell yeah, I can do it but I can't do it for everyone. And that's a big difference there. If you don't have anything for me to sell, or you don't know anything about your business, or you're not committed, I can't work with that. I can't help you. We're not a good fit for each other. If you own a hair salon, and you have employees, and you're committed, and you're willing to invest 3000 to make back 30,000. Yeah, we could get to those triple digits, it might take a couple months, might even take a year or two. And I would tell them that. Mm. But if you work with me, and we're committed, we'll find a way I'll get it done. You know, and, and it's a goal that you set. Yeah, you know, 
And, and you want that. You don't always achieve it for everyone. Of course not. But you set that goal. And that that's the goal. You know, and in most cases, if they have the foundation, if they already are making enough to run a hair salon, or a barbershop, for that matter, or a doctor or a dentist or a lawyer, helping them make six figures per month really isn't that big a deal. It really isn't because you just calculate, well, how many people do you, are you, do you have coming in now? What's your annual revenue now? It's going to be pretty close, right? So we just have to look at that and say, well, how can we duplicate this? How can we, you know, double up on those efforts? What are you doing yeah. that's a waste of time? Are you answering the phones? Well, you got to cut that out because you could be working with more customers all the time that you're spending talking on the phone. Do you have staff that are standing around looking at their phones all day long? You have to cut that mess out. You know, if you have three or four staff and they're just standing around and they're not doing anything, well, you need to let them go or reduce them to part time. So there's always a way to reduce overhead while you're growing and expanding into new markets. So, you know, when I say that on my website, I'm also very honest about people. I say, well, that's my goal. You know, that's what I want to do. And in most cases, if you are committed business owner, premium service provider, yeah, it shouldn't be that hard to do it because you should already be there. You know, I'm helping you get across that bridge, that big bridge behind you. Agreed. That makes me think I just uh, heard this quote. I was uh, I listened to the Atomic Habits, that book. And um, in it, he says, being committed to the process determines your progress. And that just hit me so hard. And that's pretty much what you're alluding to there. Right. And if you don't know how to build a process, that's, that's problematic. Mm. See, because I had that problem for years. So I would go and work at marketing agencies. And then the marketing agency might go out of business, or they might you know, cut their staff or the contract is, you know, goes to a competitor. So we don't need as many people now, whatever, whatever the case may be. So now I'm back to working as a solopreneur on my own. How do you learn to take the processes of the marketing agency and put that onto the individual? So I had to learn how to screen first and then onboard second. And part of that onboarding process was to teach the potential client, here's how I make decisions. And this is why I make the decisions that I do. This is why I'm not gonna let you design the, the company website. I'm the one who has to do that because I'm the one who has the experience doing it, right? Yeah. And you know, and that's something that's always beneficial, whatever it is that you do, ask your customer or client, what experience do you have? So if you're a restaurant consultant, ask the restaurant tour, what experience do you have managing a restaurant? Right? If they're in a mm -hmm. if, if they're in a problem situation. So that usually kind of changes the perception that they now they realize, well, wait a minute, I don't have the experience that this person does. Maybe that's why I asked them for help in the first place. You know, so then they can get out of their own way and let you come in and make the changes that need to be made. So you can affect these, you know, what, what needs to be done. You know, but you have to know how to put a process into place before you can begin benefiting from it. And that's important. And a lot of people don't know how to do that, especially if you're a freelancer. Yeah. You know, I have a, a very affordable course on my website. Um, uh, that I uh, offer for freelancers to help them come up with a process for their freelance side hustle. Um, and also, you know, learn what to talk to clients about and how to frame the discussion so that it makes sense to them in terms they can understand. Once you have that process worked out, it makes life so much easier. Mm -hmm. It's just like if you woke up every tomorrow morning and said, okay, I'm going to wake up at this time. I'm going to eat this for breakfast. Then I'm going to exercise. Then I'm going to do this and I'm going to do that. And I'm going to do the same thing at the same time every day. 
Well, it makes your life so much easier because you're on autopilot. Yeah. That's what, that's what you want to do when you work with clients. You want to have it so streamlined, so rehearsed that if a client asks you a question, you don't wince in pain. You say, oh, sure. I know exactly how to answer that question. Let me tell you, A, B, C, D, E, F, G. Whatever they could ask you. Well, I want to design my own website or I think my website should look like this. And you, your response is, you already know how to deal with that. Well, sir, or madam, uh, here's how I work. And this is based on this research and based on this experience and what your larger, more profitable, more profitable competitors are doing. Mm -hmm. We want to learn from their example. And again, if I use the Mike Tyson analogy, you're not going to step in the ring with Mike Tyson, no matter how bad or tough you think you are. You're going to work out first. You're going to get in the best shape that you think you can be in because he's still no joke, even at his age. You're going to study the the, the films. You're going to look at his movements. You mm -hmm. know, what is, how does he line you up for this devastating uppercut, you know? that sends you to sleep, you know, how does he do all these things before you step in the ring with him so that you feel more fully prepared? Why would you do that? Why would you just not jump in there? Because you take it seriously and you don't want to have your teeth knocked out of your head and go to the hospital, which is what he would do to you. So you value the outcome. You're afraid of him because he's a competitor and he's very fierce. So if you look at your competitors in a similar way, I respect them. Mm. You don't have to be afraid of them, but I respect what they've done. They're making more money than me. They're more established than me. I want to be like them. I want, maybe I want to be bigger than them. Well, you're not going to do it for free and you're not going to do it in 48 hours. That much I can tell you. So you want to respect them and learn from them. Just as you would if you were to walk into any other jungle. 110% agree. So you mentioned your freelance freelance course and stuff like that. What other, uh, just to close it out, you know, let people know where they can get in contact with you and what other services that you offer that you can help these entrepreneurs. Sure. Well, anybody and everybody can find me online. If you go to Google or go to that address bar in your browser, just type in dms.blue. Uh, those are my initials. It's what I do as a digital marketing specialist, and it's my favorite color. And you can find me at dms.blue. You can sign up for a free consultation. But obviously, only if you're a committed business owner or premium service provider. If you don't think you're one of those and you aren't prepared to be one of those, you need to be at that point uh, just for yourself and for the future of what you want to do. No, I love it, man. So I appreciate you for coming on, David, and providing as, as much value as you did out there for everybody. Well, I appreciate you having me on, Fabrion. I hope I was a good podcast guest for you. Yes, you were very, very good because I, to in all selfishness, I asked you uh, the how you screen for a good marketing company for myself because I've been sure. burned in the past. Did you look? Did you look? Companies. Did you look for those things? References, testimonials, case studies, professional memberships, professional affiliations. You know, experience in the industry. And the first company I did, and they actually had all of that. They their sales. They had a sales team. Oh, lady was very very good. Was amazing. Where they failed was when you actually started to do the business with them. We signed up and then communication just mm. like it was just bad. I, I would have to constantly be reaching out to them, all this stuff. We hired them for I've gone through two marketing companies for our lawn business. The first one we got, we paid about twelve, fifteen hundred. I can't remember exact almost actually almost like two thousand for a website that I just, I just did not like, I just didn't like the website. They never even ran any ads for us. Like they were supposed to, um, the CEO ended up like talking to me and was supposed to be repairing the relationship, but then they just stopped communicating. So 
that went away. Then um, the second one, I didn't do as well a due diligence as I should have. So I will take that ownership. And the signs were there that I think that he, it, he was a little bit too much for him, but I didn't pay attention yeah. to that. And they want to, whoever you would work with also would want to talk to you um, about your expectations. They call it expectation management. You know, what is it that you hope to achieve? And then look at your budget and see if the two balance out. So, you know, my area is primarily working with the website and the digital marketing. So I would tell you, first, we have to create the website, make sure that it can process payments online and empower you to go out and find customers. Then we have to do our utmost to make sure that it's going to rank in local Google search results. Those are the most important things. We're not going to try to do anything else until we do those first. Got to have a video commercial, got to have at least five to 10 blog posts about the value that you bring and the problems that you're solving. Got to be able to take payments online, got to have local SEO. No, those are the first issues. Anything other than that, hey, we got to take care of these first. Wow. That's what I would, would do. And as far as what the design should look like, it's already there for you. Just go to Google and type in New York lawn care service or uh, LA lawn care service or Toronto lawn care service or Boston lawn care service, Miami, you know, any large major metropolitan city. You just look, go to Google and look at larger, more profitable competitors and they show you how it's done by their own example. You look at their website, you see what they have. Okay, this so mine should look similar to that. You look at maybe two or three, and you obviously you don't want to copy what someone mm -hmm. else has. Uh, so you make it similar. It's somewhere between mm -hmm. the, these top two or three. That that's how I would do it. So whatever happened with the current one? Yeah, with the lawn, care, the lawn care uh, business, the lawn care website, whatever happened. So I, with the second guy, um, we actually, let's see, we started in December and we had a three-month contract. Didn't generate any, so he ran Facebook ads for me. He redid my website, which I did like. It's very professional now. It looks very good. Um we started running Facebook ads. None of the Facebook ads converted whatsoever. I got one lead in the last, well, no, he gave me leads. Let me re prefix it. I got leads, only one that I actually visited their house to provide the quote. The others, some of the issues I had was, it was people who said they, they didn't even need lawn service. And- um, That should be, that all needs to be done online or remotely. You don't need to be going to somebody's house unless you've already been paid. Yeah. Okay. I mean, so that's part of it right there. That's your time. That's your energy. You're spending money on gas. You're taking time away from your home, from your family, where you could be reading a book or enjoying life or, or trying to find more customers. So that's wasted time. They need to be able to go to the company website, learn all about you, submit their information. If they need, you know, there should be packages that they could sign up for. Three packages, one, two, or three. Here's the package. And you can Google that and look up lawn care packages. That's what they have. So they pick one of those three packages. They like it. They contact you about it. Or they could pay online and get started if they want. It's that's the way it should be. But the idea of you driving across town to meet someone, especially now with COVID, you don't yeah. want to be doing that. You don't want to be doing that. You should be per doing the work after you're, after you're paid. That's it. And they should be able to get like all that. the information about you from your company website. Well, are you a member of the local better business bureau? It's there on the website. Are you on Yelp? It's there on the website. 
Can they call you? Sure, the number is there on the website. All they have to do is click on it or they could leave you a voicemail. Click here, leave you a voice message. You know, um, they can pick from the top three packages that you offer. If they think their situation is unique and doesn't fit one of these three packages, that's fine. They can click here and they can schedule a Zoom call with you. You know, if you value your time and your energy and, and your experience, you set it up. And that's, that's why, that's how I would have done it. First, you have the foundation. First mm. is the company website with well-written content, with the SEO, the e-commerce, the content marketing, the email automation is set up, the branding, the logo, the, the, the theory, at least, for the, the, the paid advertising. We have some idea of what that's going to be, but we, we may not be ready yet. We want to have site backups first. We want to have a security system set up for the website. So if it's hacked, we know how to restore it. You have your social media set up. So it's all branded. It looks professional. It's tested. Your website is tested on all kinds of different devices to make sure that it works correctly. Once all that's set up and you begin to get some traction in Google, now we look at these other things. You know, in my opinion, I, I, in my opinion, I don't think a company at that point would be ready to advertise on Facebook yet. I agree, because looking back, being a little bit more educated than what I was back then, people, especially for lawn care, I get some businesses, it may work better on Facebook or not. But to me, for lawn care, people go to Google because they have a problem, their yard, whatever the issue is, they go to Google I need a lawn company, lawn care near me or lawn company, landscaping, whatever, because I have a problem and I know Google is going to give me a solution. That's right. That's exactly it. So you want your website to be the, the th you want your website to be that which Google directs them to when they look that up. That's number one. So you have to have that foundation set up first. Makes so, sense. Yeah. So, um, yeah, if you want me to look at it sometime for you, I'm happy to do that. All right. Well, look at that. The podcast turned into a consultation, guys. <laughs> he didn't know this was my plan the whole time. No, I'm just. Oh, wait. <laughs> all right, everybody. That is all that we got for you guys in today's episode of the Self-Educated Entrepreneur. Thank you for listening. And as always, I hope that we were able to help you see your future.